This is the Marvel Masterworks Vidcast, True Believers, where we cover all of the adventures in the Marvel Universe. From the wanderings of the Green Goliath, to the chaotic offices of the Daily Bugle, to the grim alleyways of Hell's Kitchen, and to the top of Avengers Tower, with your hosts, Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast. Welcome to another episode of the Marvel Masterworks Bitcast and Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam, and with me is my co-host, the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? What's up, Marvel fans? It's the Big Green Nerd here to talk about the Big Green Lady. It is the Emerald Enthusiast. Mm. There's always something with green when we, we when we seem to get together and and, and record. Um, you know what they say? It's not easy being green. It, it definitely <laughs> is not. Uh, on the Marvel side of things, getting the Hulk rights uh, to make a solo movie is not easy. Right. And And actually, that's going to come into play at the very end of this podcast, so stay tuned! And then, on the other side of the equation, being a Green Lantern fan is never easy, because uh, your favorite may not be starring in the book at any given time, or you're hearing people complain about their favorite (laughs) not starring in the book, and so... A lot of times, that's worse, so... Although, this week, you mentioned Green Lantern before me, so... Is, is there a different drinking game for that, or is it the same one? That's, that's me taking my drink of water here, so. No. There we go. I'm just doing it because I'm thirsty, and. Uh, I thought you were Adam. Sorry, dad joke. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, folks, uh, my, I, I am currently manning the, uh, the homestead on my own. Uh, I, I am, I am uh, living the bachelor's life right now. And uh, I got to tell you, given that this is a Marvel centric podcast, I can really use a Jarvis because uh, <laughs> this stuff is a lot of work, and uh, I need a break. But uh, yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of paper plates and, and, and disposable <laughs> stuff. And, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking for Jarvis's or slash offered you know, out there. If anybody wants to apply, okay. Or even um, what's it called? Uh, Jeffrey from Fresh Prince. I'll accept the Jeffrey as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, there you go. How, how, how about a sy- how about a synergy like from Jim uh, or Virgil? Virgil's. You know, Vir- oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I can use a Virgil. So, um, just so everybody knows, I'm I'm taking applications. Um, okay. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna hit up get hit up by a lot of weirdos now. Just to watch. <laughs> um, but um, we're, as Donnie alluded to, uh, we're going to talk. Uh, the, the uh, next two episodes of uh, She-Hulk in our watch order, which is three and four. Um, um, but before we do that, there's some news that I'd like to uh, talk about. Um, I believe coming in 2023 is the anniversary, the 60th anniversary of Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Because he came out in 63, correct? I believe so. Right. And so... Uh, yeah, I believe the, the comic you're talking about is number 25 of the current series. And the yeah. legacy numbering is 650. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so so what, what Donnie has sort of spoiled, not that there was a spoiler tag involved, <laughs> Sorry. is that the current run of Iron Man is going to end... The comic is going to end with issue 25, which is... Uh, the legacy numbering is 650. Uh, and then in December, on the heels of the 60th anniversary of, uh, or, or just ahead of the 60th anniversary of, of Iron Man, they're going to relaunch the title, uh, and it's going to be called uh, The Invincible Iron Man, uh, which has been the title of an Iron Man book before. Mm-hmm. And I think that should be the title because it's a great title. And that's how I came to know the character. The cover is gorgeous. Of 650? Yes. Oh, yes, it's an Alex Ross cover. And, uh, hmm. you know, I didn't know. It, uh, you see what happens, folks, is when I, when I know we're doing a particular podcast, I like to do a news search, you know, in that particular universe. So if it's Marvel in this case, Marvel, DC, DC you know, Ninja Turtles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
and the thousand podcasts we do here. Uh, but so in searching for this, I didn't know that 650 was going to be, it was a legacy numbering. So I, I thought to myself, you know, and I look at the cover and I see it's Alex Ross. And I just sat there in silence for a minute and I'm like, damn it, this is going on my pull list. <laughs> Are they doing variant covers as well? I don't know, but this this Alex Ross cover is getting purchased by me. Okay. Because it's Alex Ross. And I'm sorry, anybody that doesn't like Alex Ross's art, uh, please seek help. Um, <laughs> Good point. Um, I'm going to hold you to that. You need to show it here on the podcast someday. Oh, I absolutely will show yeah. the issue. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, you know, I'm definitely going to be getting the six, uh, 650 there. And um, I also uh, may, uh, I, I'm, I'm probably going to get, um, um, so basically the run that's ending just before we continue is, um, has been by writer Christopher uh, Cantwell. Mm-hmm. And he has been basically <coughs> um, he's basically been he's basically brought um, Tony sort of he's created a, a scenario where Tony's had to go back to basics and really get low tech at some points mm-hmm. uh, and then you know he's throughout the course of the run, he's kind of built back up, built himself back up and, you know, he's gotten really high tech again. Mm-hmm. So it's been, it's been like a, you know, hit rock bottom and then, and then build yourself back up. Hit, hit rock bottom and then hit people's elbow. Yeah. No. Well, I wish that would have been funny, but you know, <laughs> I, I like we to saw see that Tony. With, remember we saw that with Batman recently too, where he's, you know, kind of slumming it a little bit and having to go low tech. Right. Right. And, uh, and so, um, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, I've been reading the run digitally. It's really good. Um, I, I've enjoyed it. Um, and so, um, but I will pick up the 650. And then um, in December, as I mentioned, um, I'm, and I'm just going to, I just want to pull up uh, the uh, creator information because I want to get the, the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the, the name, details, yeah, right? yes, the name, the names of the people involved, um, in the, in the, in the relaunched book, um, uh, correct. So just bear with okay. me for a second. Uh, okay. Invincible Iron Man, uh, number one. Hmm. Uh, December. Okay, yeah, I really do love that cover. I got to tell you. What are you talking about now? Uh the six fifty, or well, twenty five yeah. slash six fifty. Yeah, it's it's a, it's 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 a sweet cover. Uh, yeah. It's, By the it's, way, I really like that Marvel does that to give you a little bit of continuity and like for helping people know where they are. Yeah, I, I totally understand why they do all the number ones. I get it, but I also like the fact that they have. The legacy number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In uh, fact, you know, I yeah. just recently, you know, I've had a couple people, you know, DM me and say, hey, why isn't The Green Lantern by Morrison and Sharp? Why isn't that considered like volume seven? And, you know, this run is volume eight. And I was like, actually, this run, according to DC, is volume six. And then, <laughs> there's nothing there. But it is confusing because, again, you know, that version of Green Lantern is its own entity even yeah. though thorn has mentioned a couple of things from it yeah absolutely yeah it's, it's just i i get why they do the new number ones but i like i do like the i like the big numbers you yeah. know there's, there's something yes and the, my point being is i think dc should do this as well the legacy numbers yeah yeah i, yeah. I, I absolutely 100 percent agree yes. so i've pulled up the information so um in december December 7th to be exact. They're going to relaunch with the Invincible Iron Man. And it's going to be written by, uh, I believe his name is Jerry Duggan. Mm-hmm. Not to be, not related to Hacksaw Jim Duggan at all. 
right? Obviously or Pat Dugan. Yeah. yeah, or exactly. Uh, so he's going to write, and Juan Frieri is going to draw, and that artist uh, is currently, or is involved in the Avengers book currently. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it basically there's a contract out on, or the description in this, in this, for this first initial run is that um, there's a, a hit out on Tony Stark. Mm, okay. And so all the assassins in the, in, in the Marvel Universe are going to come after him. And he's got to, you know. So it sounds like a yeah. cool, yeah, a, a cool concept. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so in the world of Iron Man, there's, there's lots to look forward to in November and December. And I, you know, Obviously, through the films, uh, the MCU films, Iron Man has become a favorite character of mine. Uh, well, as yeah. so with a lot of people. And so I, I started reading back when the, you know, I, I think after the first film is when I started picking up some Iron Man books. Uh, but, and I will, I will clarify, I mean, if you've listened to my podcast long enough, you've heard me complain and make jokes about, you know, Uncle Tony, right? Right. Basically, right. assuming the role, you know, the the, the 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 father figure of of Peter Parker in the MCU, mm-hmm. yeah. that is something I'm not keyed on. But apart from that, I, I do love the Iron Man character. Uh, he's probably, uh, for me, uh, top three Marvel characters in my mm-hmm. for me. So there's Daredevil, Iron Man, and Blade are really the top three. Well, and I'm glad to see Iron Man's ascension in pop culture. Prior to 2008, Iron Man, if you ask people, name your top 10 Marvel characters, he might have cracked the top 10, but he wouldn't have been the top three or top five for most people. Some Iron Man readers, I get, you know, you're loyal readers, and that's great. But now, when you think Marvel, probably you think, you know, Peter Parker, of course, you know, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Iron Man, are the, they're in the top three somewhere. And, and and the thing is too, like, you know. The thing is too. The, the, no, no. I, mean, <laughs> I realize how that sounds, but um, the, the interesting aspect of it is that so that movie catapulted the character into superstardom, um, but also in terms of the movie. People are still clamoring for a return of Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's what I say. Look, Robert Downey Jr. outside of the MCU may not be a uh, you know a humongous box office draw. I mean, the the the, the 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 Sherlock Holmes movies did well, but but that's an IP, right? You know, like mm-hmm. so, Iron Man is an IP. So outside of IP work, maybe. Robert Downey Jr. isn't as big of a draw, but Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man puts rear ends in the movie theater. And and they wouldn't have to bring him back and try to supplant other characters that they are promoting. Just a flashback scene. Or, yeah, I, I think any form, yeah. any form of bringing him back yeah. would, would, I think, get the audience, you know, the... the the fan base uh, excited because I still see people clamoring, you know, for Tony Stark. And, and, and the reason I say this is, you know, like, you know, the characters made a, made a, made a, made an imprint when the conversation about a character coming back and an actor portraying him coming back goes beyond the, the, the you know, the Twitter sphere and the hashtag sphere mm-hmm. and extends to outside, you know, the, my, my litmus test is, Basically, the family members I know that, aside from watching the MCU movies, they don't read comics. You know, they don't. They don't follow the news. So yeah, the, like, the people who don't inhabit yeah. nerdy circles like you yeah. and I. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I've seen so many cousins of mine and my brother saying, "They got," or, you know, and they, you know, echoing the sentiment that 
they've got to they've got to find a way to you know bring back Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, and, and I think um, possibly in Ironheart, like if he's part of the AI, uh, sure, that that kind of trains her. Um, um, and, and that's the kind of thing that could be done in just like a couple of weeks. He shoots those scenes by himself, and they yeah. make him look like whatever the armor has him looking like. You know, yeah. like a hologram or something, and he, you know, he gets a lot of money for not a lot of work. Right, and I think he'd be open to that. And look, I, I, I'm going to put it out there, just my personal opinion, my personal. This is me thinking. I, I don't know anything. I have no sources, so I'm not claiming to, anything like okay. that. So, in other words, we could get this on. We got this covered. Probably. I mean, this will be this will be headline news tomorrow. Right. Uh, but. In my opinion, I think that I think in terms of being Iron Man, being in the suit, mm -hmm. uh, the armor, right. I think we'll see Tony Stark as Iron Man one more time. Okay. Like a full fledged Iron Man. And I think it'll be some shenanigans in Secret Wars. Okay. Avengers Secret Wars. So, but otherwise, if we do ever see him again, it'll be via the AI. You know him, sort of, yeah. being the being the Jarvis to uh, to Riri Williams. Right, right. But, and I, I've always felt that he. I never bought the fact that we were never ever going to see him again. Yeah. He may not be the feature anymore as far as Iron yeah. Man goes. Yeah. But there's so much of the MCU was built with him as the centerpiece. Oh, he's the face. Yeah. I mean, he was the face of it all the way up until Endgame. Right, yes. uh, you know they they built the cinematic universe around him, much like on the DC side of things, they built the cinematic universe around Henry Cavill. One worked, one unfortunately didn't work so well. So, and, and this is why I say you you can gauge the interest in in a in a movie's popularity and a care and a and an actor playing a role's popularity on the reaction. In the outside world, outside of Twitter, and I think a good idea. Yeah. there's no argument that I, that Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man is, you know, one of those you know castings that is just so spot on. But the the the, the elevation that those movies did for the comic character is exceptional. That, I mean, that's what you hope that these movies do for the for for the for the source material. Mm -hmm. so, Although you know, it, to to be fair, Henry Cavill followed yeah. an icon in Christopher yeah, uh, Reeve. I mean, Superman already has that with Christopher right. Reeve. Yeah. But but my argument is, you know, because I saw the other day somebody was saying to me uh, about how, oh, if they bring back and don't get me wrong, DC note note here, if they bring back, I've said it before, if they bring back Henry, I'm all for it. Uh, you know, Likewise, yeah. But to me, he was saying, you know, if they bring back Henry, it'll make the fans extremely happy. I, I'm like, sure, the Twitter fans, the Twitter bubble, yeah, a lot of fans, sure. But yeah. the general audience, I like to me, the, to me, just my perception, the general audience, if they rebooted Superman and put somebody else in that role, the, if the movie was good, the audience would go along with it, or whatever mm -hmm. project he was in, the audience would accept it. I don't see like none of my none of my my second cousins, third cousins come on. You know they really got to get that Henry Cavill back as Superman. I, I haven't right. seen that. I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen the hashtags. Yeah. But again, the Twitter bubble is not as you know um, not as indicative of the general audience, right? As right. some whatever. But that's what I'm saying. Well, and, and let me echo your sentiments. A lot of people, after both Man of Steel and BVS, people who I know who, again, don't read comics, don't really watch a lot of superhero shows or movies, who took that in with the impression of kind of Christopher Reeves' style of Superman, you know, the bright, hopeful, yeah. kind yeah. of, you know, in places, jokey Superman. They were just like, you know, what? 
it, it, is Superman ever like this in the comics? And I'm like, yeah. People were asking, why is he constipated? <laughs> and I'm like, well. And yeah, and I told people, I'm like, there are very different interpretations of Superman yeah. throughout his long yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, my, my thing is just like. But not, not everybody was ready for what Cavill's Superman did. Or and, you know, and that's Snyder's no, Superman. That's whatever no slight to Cavill. Yeah. It was just the material he was given. Yeah. I think, then now, if he's given, if he does come back and he's given, like, you know, material that is more, not jokey, but more hopeful, more, up, you know, sure, positive, sure. I think he could reach the status of Christopher Reeve and Robert Downey Jr. I think it's possible. Yeah. And they were headed in that direction, but this. The problems that Warner Brothers we have talked oh. about in the past, it goes lo- far beyond just the creative side of the DC universe. But, 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 but my ultimate point is, I think if you put, I, Robert, if you t- if you if Marvel puts out a, a press release that says Robert Downey Jr. is back and he's headlining a movie mm-hmm. again. Robert Downey Jr.'s IP work, non-IP work may not put butts in seats. But you put him in a, in a Marvel Universe movie or an Iron Man movie, that thing's going to make near a billion. That's an event. And that's that's a four-quadrant movie. That's everybody who would be interested in this would be whereas, whereas interested because of Robert, Dar- there's Robert no Downey guarantee, Jr. There's no guarantee that if you put Henry Cavill in a, in a DC movie... That alone is not going to propel the movie to box office heights because there's a reason why, you know, like Iron Man had, what, two movies before The Avengers? Yes. Right? Both of those were out. There's a reason why Henry Cavill's Superman only got one solo movie and then Batman and Wonder Woman with video cameos from the rest of the Justice League were jammed in, in in his sequel, so but but so again, this is not a Superman podcast. But what I'm saying is the effect that that actor has had on not only the films and the film franchise, but the comic books, elevating them to to to, to you know higher status. Yeah, icon level. Yeah, yeah it is is probably you can't deny that. And right. I haven't seen that in, in terms of. In terms of effects on the comic book popularity, mm-hmm. I don't know that I've seen that because Spider Man's always been popular. Wolverine's always been a star before Hugh Jackman. Uh, well, I would say that Jackman elevated the character. I mean, he was he was popular, right? But the X Men books sold. The, they saw as well as the the cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right, so you know, but the, the Iron, Iron Man, Man, the Iron Man cartoon wasn't anywhere near as popular as the X Men cartoon. Although I did like that cartoon. Uh, so did I. But have you ever heard that the the theme song? You know, I am Iron Man, and now I'm, you know I'm going to lose our viewership here because I'm singing. Oh, we but... lost everybody. <laughs> Subscribers are down, everything. I know, but <laughs> so yeah, like, but I don't know. I don't know that his that that that. There's been an impact on that level from from the from the the live action portrayal affecting the comic mm-hmm. and sales and things like that. The way the way it's happened with Iron Man since 2008. Sure. Like, I, I don't know that there is. There, I mean, some things carried over. Like when when Superman the movie came out, you know, since then they've incorporated you know the crystalline fortress. You know, they've incorporated that aspect into the movie, the, the thing. And, you know, certainly with Superman, with the radio seri- serials introduced us to the kryptonite and, you know, all the jazz. Right, right. So there has been that before, but in terms of the level of the modern movie affecting the sales, not just forget about concepts, but the sales and popularity of a character, I don't think I've seen it to this level with, than it has with Iron Man. So... Big things coming for the 60th anniversary of um, of Iron Man, and I look forward to that issue 650, which I will uh, purchase and then show off on one of our episodes of, of this podcast. All right. But any any thoughts? Any final thoughts on the uh, 60th anniversary coming up of Iron Man? No, I'm just glad when these things happen. You know, a reminder of you know where the character has come, and I've always had a little bit of concern that. As we're talking, there is such a big association of Robert Downey Jr. with the character. 
can the character sustain that popularity once he's gone, or at least mostly gone? You know, I really want to see the character continue to at least sustain the popularity that it has now into decades to come. I don't want there to be a drop off. So anything uh, that puts the character back into pop culture, I'm happy for that. It's gonna. I'm going to be very curious, uh, Donnie, to see at some point if, if, if the direction of the multiverse saga leads to It's the wording might be uh, incorrect, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If the end of the multiverse saga leads to some sort of reboot of the timeline of the universe, okay. If there is a recasting down the road of Iron Man, how that's going to look like? Whoever gets that role, it will be challenging. I feel sorry for that individual because yeah. there, there are two there are two Marvel characters that whoever assumes the role I, I truly feel sorry for, and that is uh, Wolverine and Tony Stark Iron Man. Right. Uh, like you know, DC. Well, is and always, hey, yeah, Mahershala Ali, he's got his work cut out cut out for him too. I, I he's agree, a great but actor, but but it's not to the level like. Sure. Blade, Blade was good. Blade was popular, but I don't think it's to the level of those two. Well, you know, Blade, yeah. Blade was R-rated and yeah. not part of a, a larger shared universe like, the way that like, Iron Man was. He may have an issue in the nerd community. Like they'll, they'll, they'll be like in our sphere, they'll be a little bit more critical. But I'm yeah. talking when general audiences get a whiff of okay, so and so's playing Wolverine. Or so and so's been recast as Iron Man. I think there's going to be a massive overreactions as there is with like you look on the DC side. Every time somebody's cast as Superman, well, oh, but it's not Christopher Reeve, and you know, or you know, in some cases with Batman, oh, but who? How are they going to top yeah. Bale? Right? Yeah. It's like. So, oh, I saw I saw it with Andrew Garfield. People, there were some people losing yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. their minds because they br didn't bring Tobey Maguire back. That, that's the only character so far that Marvel's had to experience that with. Uh, but I think it's they're going to get a lot more of that with with those two characters. Yeah. So good luck to whoever get books those roles. Uh, my advice: stay offline because yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I you know I. I the internet, the internet's going to be more of a hellscape when the, when those two recastings. Yeah. I mean, if I look, eventually somebody else is going to play Tony Stark. I mean, the MCU at some point is going to have to pu push some sort of reset button. There, there's only so far, you know, it can go without the Iron Man's, the 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 the. the uh, uh, Steve Rogers, uh, you know, of the world. So mm -hmm. at some point, it's inevitable. And who knows? Of course, the Wolverine one is more imminent because you got to believe that at some point here, uh, Feige is going to want to get moving on the X-Men. Uh, of course. That's so, a huge part of this universe that has not been opened up yet. You know, the only ones that have a real luxury are the Fantastic Four. Whoever assumes whoever those ones, like, is anybody going to care about, oh, wow, you, you don't live up to, you know, Jessica Alba as Sue Storm. Like, like, I don't think anybody's going to be saying that. Not that I had a problem with Jessica Alba as Sue Storm, because at the end of the day, Jessica Alba is yes. <laughs> on the list. Um, but, you know, but I don't think, you know, the, the Fantastic Four actors are going to say, man, this guy doesn't hold a candle to Michael B. Jordan as, as, uh, as the hero. Nobody's going to say that. So, uh, you know. Um, well, here, here's another one. Let me throw this out there. Elizabeth Olsen. They probably have great plans for that character. Oh, yeah. Will she always want to be Scarlet Witch? Will she want to be Scarlet Witch for another 10 years? That's a good question. You know? Uh, you know, and, I, and I've always thought, look, when, it, and I, I, I'm, I'm with you, I'm like, we're going to see Robert Downey Jr. at some point again. Because my theory has been, okay, look at his non-IP work. It hasn't done well. So at some point, he's going to be like, hmm, 
that $50 million Marvel paycheck <laughs> is pretty damn enticing, yeah. you know? And so, I, I think, and look, I'm sure if he did come back, he'd give us a great performance. Like, I don't think he'd phone it in for the sake of just give me my check and I'll get out of here. Because uh, I'm sure there's an element of, you know, people have loved this character and I want to do it well if I, if I did come back to mm-hmm. sort of satisfy them. So I don't think he'd phone it in by any means. But let's be honest, Donnie. If they were throwing that kind of money at us to play a role, that would be a, a factor in us accepting the, accepting the comeback. I mean, oh. we're, we're not going to sit here and lie and say, well, Robert Downey Jr. is going to come back because of the artistic integrity, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. I mean, that 50, again, the $50 million paycheck, you'd be like, oh, I could, I could add an extension to my house. I could upgrade the pool, you know, whatever. whatever. But so, if if DC ever wanted me to do voice work on a Green Lantern animated series or animated, I don't think they're paying you fifty million dollars. I I'd, I'd do it for free. I would don't clean. Tell them that. Don't tell I'd, them. I'd go and clean Jeff Thorne's toilet if they would okay, let me be part right, of the project. See, now he's never going to come back <laughs> because you just say you're going to clean his toilet. That's you know. It's, they get that they give him what a trailer or whatever. I'll go clean his toilet if yeah, they let me like listen, do the voice. Come work. back, we'll get a restraining order on Donnie. <laughs> so uh, he but I to be in there. <laughs> but I digress. Um, yeah, so big things coming for Iron Man's 60th uh, anniversary. Uh, a big a milestone issue and a new title. And looking forward to it because the Armored Avenger is one of my favorite Avengers, and so. Uh, I look forward to celebrating uh, his longevity uh, as a comic character. But that brings the end of, of, of this news portion. We may have some breaking news throughout the show because D23 is going on. And if they announce anything, I have my browser open. I'm double-checking all the time. If they announce anything that is new that we haven't heard of before, I'll, I'll, I'll cut in and say, breaking news, Donnie, and then we'll, 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 we'll mention it. But that, for, for right now, that's the end of the news portion. We're going to take a quick break, and on the other side, we'll be back to talk about She-Hulk, episodes three and four. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. What's up, everyone? It's the Emerald Enthusiast. For all of your multiverse viewing and listening needs, check out our shows, which include Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, Power Rangers, the Marvel Universe, and the DC Universe, including the Emerald Echo Podcast. You can check us out on Podbean, and remember to subscribe right here on YouTube. That's the Multiverse Musings Podcast Network. From the first podcast to the last. And we're back! We are indeed. And we're back to talk more about She-Hulk. Attorney and Law. Yes. The latest... A magnificent show. Disney Plus Marvel Cinematic Universe offering. And as Donnie was saying, I, I, I also enjoy the show uh, immensely. Uh, I look forward to it every week. And um, so definitely when episodes three and four came around, I was excited to see where it goes uh, next. So... Donnie, where did we leave off? Uh, where, 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 where are we in episode three? What happens? This is episode three: the people versus Emil Blonsky. And of course, we see that Jennifer is upset with Blonsky because she saw him on TV participating in a Fight Club, not in his cell, which of course makes her case very much more difficult. So yeah. So he explains, of course, that it was not his fault that he was there under the uh, spell of the Sorcerer Supreme Wong. And he had a chance to stay out of prison, but he willingly went back. Yeah. Um, he see, he does, I will give credit where credit is due. He does seem, there does seem to be a reformation there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think he's... He's being facetious 
in his uh, desire and want to be to be better. Okay. So you don't think he's playing the long game? I don't think so, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So he's play, he's, he is playing the long game, though. Sorry. The long uh, game, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I... Um, uh, as of right now, I believe him. For, I, I could be wrong, but I believe him. Okay. Well, Jennifer tries to track down Wong... And news of her appointment as the Abomination's lawyer stirs up a lot of controversy in the media. So we eventually see Wong appear and he meets with Jennifer and he agrees to testify that he was the catalyst for Blonsky being out of his cell. Mm, yeah. And we also see, and this adds to your argument, the fact that Blonsky can control his transformations both into the abomination and return to his normal, you know, normal stature. And what's funny is when he did that, um, it freaked out the uh, the judges and everybody there, like yeah. the judicial yeah. panel. Yeah. And thankfully, he put his clothes back on before he transformed back into himself. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. A, <laughs> I, I don't need to see Blonsky, but but <laughs> exactly, uh, uh, or anything else. Anyway, so. Yeah. Blonsky oh, is so actually you know. right. Exactly. I saw I saw a blue one at the Watchmen movie. I don't need to see. <laughs> I, I don't need to see a green one. Thank you very yeah. much. Exactly. Uh, okay, so Blonsky is released on parole, but he's of course told that he cannot transform again. And didn't they say that they were going to put him in an, an inhibitor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. So, meanwhile, Jennifer's former colleague Dennis Bukowski approaches the superhuman law division for a case involving Runa, who is a shape-shifting light elf from New Asgard, who has tricked him into, I believe the number was $175,000 worth of goods and whatever, because she had tricked him into believing that he was dating Megan the Stallion. Mm -hmm. Who, by the way, I learned from She-Hulk that Megan the Stallion is a real person. I thought she was some kind of fictional character. I was wrong. Um, this is not the well, person. I mean, I mean, her the persona. Well, yeah. I mean, her name. I mean, her last name is not the Stallion. So probably not. Te yeah. te I, I would hope not. <laughs> so well, technically, you're not you're not all wrong there, Donnie. Yeah. My point being is that like I thought she was completely a fictional character, much like I thought Lady Gaga was for years before I realized, oh, that's an actual person. It's so. like Doink the Clown. He's a fictional character. <laughs> right. But there was a, a real person on this. There team. was Matt Bourne. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, so the more you know, yeah. now you know, and knowing's half the battle. G.I. Yeah. Joe. That's a different yeah, we just We just did a WWE reference, G.I. Joe. <laughs> that's what you get on this podcast. <laughs> that's right. Going all over the place. So, the case is assigned to Jennifer's co worker, Augustus Pug. I think it's Pugalese. Is that how you say it? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he also played, uh, he was also an arrow. Right, right. He's an arrow alum. I can't scream right. it like my old co-host used to do. Okay. Because that would be ridiculous. But, uh, you know. So, you know, ju jumping back and forth with multiverses here. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, Walters helps Pug win the case. And Jennifer goes on TV. And we see, we kind of see this idea of people looking at her as a celebrity first and a lawyer second. Right. Because they ask her about like her fitness routines or something like that, or her, you know, her her hair care and all that kind of stuff, and she's like, "Wait a minute, what?" So, obviously, again, th this idea of her being a celebrity is starting to build. Right. So near the end of this episode, she is attacked by four men who I think are at least based on the weapons, they are the Wrecking Crew. Yes, that is, and that's confirmed. Yeah, I really like. <laughs> I really like this scene when she like immediately screams and is like, oh, wait a minute, I'll just transform and just beat the living snot out of all these guys. So That was great to see her unleash and just... Yes. And again, it's... What's cool about that is you can imagine how many women have experienced you know the fear 
and just intimidation of walking to their car or walking home late at night. And, you know, I, I've, I've heard from some, some women personally that say, you know, it's, it's always, it's a little scary, you know. Of course it would be. Walking to your car or, or, or wherever you're going, you know, because you, and you get, you get, some, and I'm not saying all men gang up on her like that, but even, I mean, some men can be idiots and just the heckling they do and all that. Mm -hmm. It's 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 disturbing. It's frightening. So that the, leading up to the beatdown, I could imagine that that is a real experience that the women may go through. And I really liked her reaction of you know I'm going to scream and then oh yeah and then you know bam yeah I'm she Hulk right yeah, yeah. exactly so. Yeah, and you know we we talk about we know we're not saying that everything on this show is perfect, no. and I didn't necessarily mind that. You know, I'm not I'm not going to say that I'm a huge fan of the of the Wrecking Crew, but I do like them. And you know, some people who are big Wrecking Crew fans are like, well, they were kind of nerfed. You know, they were kind of treated like jobbers. And I I understand that. You know, people didn't recognize them. You know, Thunderball, for instance is you know is a genius and so they made him out to be just kind of a disposable thug so i can see some criticisms that i think are valid coming the way of the show right but not the ridiculousness that all these dude bros are throwing out there that you're trying to say that all men are weak and weird and not equal to women that's not oh there, there's yeah there's hate for this show and it's simply because It's a female-led show. Mm -hmm. It's I happened mean, to every female-led show on this channel. We've gotten to a point where the, 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 these these men uh, men babies just live in fear at the prospect of a female superhero leading a show or a movie, and it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Right. And that, that was evident by the conversation that she had with Bruce about DBT. Everybody, you know, taking it one way when that's not what she meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, just yeah, just ridiculous. So, anyway, so, again, really like this episode, but we're not done. There's yet another scene that caused all kinds of controversy. And that, <laughs> and that was Jen having... Just a very innocuous good time with her new friend, Megan the Stallion, in her office. And they danced. And Jennifer, you know, as She-Hulk, she twerked. And, again, a very innocuous scene between two friends having a good time. And the explosion online has but been... Donnie, she's at work. She shouldn't be... God forbid anybody, anybody have a moment of good time at work. Yeah. Now, look... I've never twerked in an office before, but I've had a few. I've had a few laughs. Yeah, I've had some fun. Like it's not like if you if you can susp suspend disbelief that a man or a woman can turn into a raging Hulk. Mm -hmm. You can't suspend this belief that two women would be twerking in an office building. And I'm sorry, there was nothing inappropriate about it at all. It no. was funny. It's not I mean, like she. It's not like she crawled up on the pole, desk. If there was a stripper pole in the middle of the office, I mean, when did HBO buy my buy, buy uh, Marvel? But <laughs> but aside from that, yeah, uh, you know it's. it's uh, then I can see, hey, this is taking it too far. But then, yeah, exactly. It's not like she did something like what you're talking. It's not like she put on a G string and went out and danced for you know all the male lawyers or whatever. It was and funny. Listen, besides the point, and I'm going to get as politely, politely, somewhat crude as I can. Okay. All these people complaining about that twerking scene. Mm -hmm. When back when you were teenagers. You know you would have enjoyed that scene. Stop complaining. <laughs> you know, maybe it's time to get out of the basement at, at 45, 50 years old and, and, and move on. Because, I mean, these are the people that are complaining. It's, it's, 
let's be honest. So, you know, um, like it, it's, and besides, Don, here's the critical part is that it's a post credit scene. Yes. So the dancing, the twerking, dancing, however you want to phrase it, yeah. did not happen in the midst of the third act. And was, it wasn't a, a, a part of the resolution of the film. Like, where were the complaints from these same people, Donnie, when the Guardians of the Galaxy had a dance-off in the third act? Right. I didn't see, I didn't see the level of complaints that I'm seeing here. Mm-hmm. Why, why was that? Why, why, and I think we know why that was, you know. And I think, oh, we know why, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I think, I think I have more, uh, more of a problem with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and I still love that movie, but I have a pro- I, have an, I think more of an issue with the dance-off in that third act that is part of the resolution of the, of the big fight that I do a, two, two women twerking in an office in a post scene. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So, if you, if you say you enjoyed the third act of Guardians of the Galaxy but are complaining about this, you're a hypocrite. Sorry. Right. And this is people who are looking at this and saying, oh, this isn't how She-Hulk is supposed to be. Have you never picked up a She-Hulk? No, they haven't. They haven't done it. Yeah, I guarantee you. This is the same woman who, the first time she moved into an apartment that Wasp gave her in Sensational She-Hulk, and Wasp mentioned the cleaning crew, and She-Hulk was like, oh, I hope they're a bunch of men in tight t-shirts with big muscles. Yeah. And it's meant to be funny. And a lot of people, again, I think they thought, they heard She-Hulk, and they thought she was going to be a female version of the Hulk. In fact... Her personality is very different from the Hulk. Very different from Bruce Banner. She-Hulk should have humor and jokes. Yes. The Incredible Hulk should not. Like, if you read a Hulk comic, and you read a She-Hulk comic, the tones are two very different. Mm -hmm. My issue is that the MCU has made Bruce Banner the Hulk more of a jokey character than he should be. No, I would but, agree. Yeah, but I, but I, I think they've got the tone for She-Hulk pitch perfect. We've seen that She-Hulk Jennifer Walters is a much more mentally healthy character than Bruce Banner is, which yeah. makes sense because she was an adult with adult coping skills. She also has a great support system. We've seen her family. There's a very loving support system there. So she has grown up with a sense of humor. She didn't experience the childhood trauma that Bruce did. Right. And who, you know, Bruce, again, much like, you know, we talked about with that episode with them talking about DBT. Right. Bruce had to basically teach himself how to cope once he became an adult and he Absolutely. was already very damaged. Yep. She's not. Yep. So. Okay. So do we rate this episode yeah, or do we? Let's rate them separately. Let's rate them separately. Hmm. Um, out of five, I'm going to give it a 4.5. Uh, letter grade, letter grade. Remember, letter, letter grade. grade. Okay. Um, 4.5. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, Letter <Not> grade. <laughs> I'm going to give it an A minus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I will as well. I, I liked it. Uh, really solid episode. Continued what you liked from the from the first one, uh, the first two. And built off that, I thought most of the humor landed for me. Uh, and, uh, you know, there wasn't a ton of action in this one. Which speaks to the strength of the character. But she doesn't still, need a yeah, lot of smackdowns. But I was still engrossed by it because I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in Jennifer Walters. So. Right. Exactly. I, that, that's a good thing. This uh, show it, is carried by the by the richness of this character and her personality. Absolutely. So A minus for both of us. Mm-hmm. Now, before we move on to episode four, Donnie, I just want to alert uh, our our viewing and listening audience. Breaking news. 
Yes, Marvel has released, Marvel Studios has released uh, a trailer for Werewolf by... Uh, uh, what is it? Werewolf by Night? Is that what yes, it is? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and they've also released a trailer for Secret Wars so far. Okay. The show. So what Donnie and I will do is we will we will wa- we will discuss them separately on another show, and we will bring that conversation to you. Uh, but I just want to keep you abreast of of what's going on and what's out there, so that if you want to check that stuff out while we're talking, you can. But we will we will give you a breakdown of both of those trailers in another episode. Down the Please. Road. So thank you for keeping us abreast. And I'll yeah. keep you a leg and a wing, anyway. Sounds so. like a plan, yeah. <laughs> and we'll both be ahead of the game. <laughs> I'm hanging around you way too long, sir. When I said doing that. All right, episode four. <laughs> okay, episode four. Is this not real magic? That's the name of the episode. So we see that Donnie Blaze, a magician hmm. at... I wonder Mid- if he's related to a specific person. You know, I'm, I gosh, I meant to, I meant to look that up. That's quite a hot head, and yeah. likes to ride motorcycles. <laughs> so he is a magician at Mystic Castle, who was expelled from Camartage for unethical use of magic, and he's able he's able to open one of those portals and send a a character who has experienced. Much more online reaction than I thought she would. This is Madison with a Y, but not where you think it is. <laughs> I thought she was fun. Oh, don't, don't get me wrong. I did too. But I didn't realize that so many people would like latch onto her. I thought she was hilarious. She's going to get a spinoff. Uh, I, I tell you, a lot of people are clamoring for that. Like legitimately, they want to see I'm joking, her. but I, look. No, I, there know, are people who, are, they want to see her and Wong in a spinoff. I'd watch it. I'm down. Hey. And also, I'll just throw it out there because we're all on the Madison dream. The actress that played Madison, on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so she is sent to another dimension, and later on we get this backstory where she made a deal with a demon. and That's like, always a good plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Didn't work well for Peter Parker in the comics, now did it? Um, so we're not. Yeah. <laughs> And she she had this like really like funny backstory about what like being in lava with a goat or something like that and uh, yeah so I I really like the the levity of that character so Wong approaches She Hulk and asks for help in making an example of Blaze because he doesn't want people misusing the mystic arts because it could have massive ramifications misusing the mystic arts is say that five times. Miss using the mystic arts. Now you do the other four. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> they don't pay me enough to do that. That's right. Well, you have to pay me a lot of Monopoly money for me to do that. So anyway. So she decides to help Wong launch a case against Mystic Castle's owner, Cornelius P. Willows. By the way, I saw that that actor, and I need to look up his name because I, I he he deserves the attention here. He is actually the oldest actor, I believe, to ever be in the MCU. You're talking about the guy with the hat. Yes, the older fellow. Yes. And I, I'm going to look up his name here, and I meant to do this before the podcast. And But I saw that he is actually the oldest actor. Oh, cool. And I'm going to, I believe the actor is actually a hundred over 100 years old. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh damn! Is he still working? Yes. And I want to. I want to look up his name because that that deserves some attention. Yes, Cornelius P. Willows is the the character's name, and I need to find this guy. His name is Leon Lamar. And I want to find when it, when is his birthday? I have seen him before. Leon Lamar, come on, he's been in a lot of things over the years. Yes, Leon Lamar. 
Oh, come on. I saw this. He is 104 years old. Wow. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Which is fitting for something related to the Incredible Hulk. But, yes. So, the Incredible Leon Lamar. So, yes, Mr. Lamar, congratulations to you for pursuing a dream and continuing to do this at your age. That's that's amazing. Yeah. That's... I didn't... I didn't... I didn't realize he was that age. Wow. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. Yep. Leon Lamar. So, yes. All right. Yes, he was born in 1919. Well, I mean, that's... <laughs> I just... I can't even, like, fathom that. So, anyway. Where was I here? So, um... Walter's Jennifer, she creates a profile on a dating app in hopes of trying to start a social life, and she doesn't have any success as Jennifer. Mm-hmm. And we've seen this this kind of narrative point used before in other superhero things where the superhero, the persona, becomes kind of this fetishized version where whether it's men or women, it doesn't really matter. They're after the persona and not the individual behind it. Mm. So it's like people don't have a lot of interest in Jen. They just want She-Hulk. Right. Which is which is pretty sad, and that comes back into play later on in the episode. Well, I, I, I'm just going to say it right straight off. I did both. I, I, if I was living in the MCU, I'd date either uh, Jennifer Walters or She-Hulk. I told my wife when we got married, I was like, you know, I will, there will never be another woman for me. The only woman that I would take pause is made out of, you know, color and ink. And I'm talking about She-Hulk because, you know, if you're an older nerd, you, you probably had a crush on She-Hulk at some point in your life or you still do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when you saw Jade Cargo come out. I liked it. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm not going to argue with you and she's, a, she's very believable as She-Hulk is she not oh uh, so. she could certainly destroy me that's for sure <laughs> uh, no I mean that seriously uh, yeah. she, that's not a euphemism oh that's, she she is she is an amazing specimen So that's a legitimate um, um, that's a legitimate if you don't know who Jade Cargill is, go check out AEW. She is a she's a wrestler, and she came out with an outfit inspired by She-Hulk, and she looked like she could play C- She-Hulk with no CGI. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, Blaze continues to screw with the Mystic Arts, and he accidentally. Re- unleashes a swarm of demons while Jen as She-Hulk is on a date. So Wong shows up and says, you know, you got to come help me. You got to come do Hulk stuff, as he said. And they're able to have, they find, we do get a big action scene here, which I liked, by the way. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Yeah. And so she basically is able to help Wong send them all back. And Blaze and Willows agree to the cease and desist order because they were helped from causing this catastrophe by the She-Hulk and Wong. And they're scared. Uh, they're scared out of their minds. Well, exactly, as they should have been. Those, 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 yeah. Those things were nasty looking, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were, yeah, they were, they were nasty looking, but they look great at the same point. You know what I mean? Well, the, the CGI, CGI, yeah, on the show has been amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know some people were concerned about that. You know, leading up to the show, but it's been it's been absolutely fine. So, this show ends with She Hulk. And by the way, we also saw that She Hulk finds a guy that she really likes, and they have this great date. Which, by the way, again, this is something She Hulk would do. She's always been kind of adventurous, and you know, kind of owning her sexuality. 
There was nothing inappropriate here, but obviously they went on a date. The next morning, though, the guy sees her back as Jen and is immediately not interested. And you had to feel bad for Jen there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I really like the fact that she showed back up as She-Hulk and, you know, she's on top of him and goes to kiss him. And he's like, you got something in your hair. And she's like, oh, it's just demon. <laughs> Which, listen, if I was reading a book and that happened to me, I mean, does it get any better? <laughs> I mean, if I was reading a comic book and not a novel with no pictures, yeah. it would be better. But aside from that, I mean, yeah. and listen, if I woke up the next morning and, and Jen was there and she made me breakfast, I ain't walking out that door. I'll tell you that right now. But you had, again, you had to immediately feel bad for her because he's oh, like, who, without, who, without, yeah, without. who are you? And she's like, oh, it's just me. It's, you know, Jen without the She-Hulk. And he immediately wanted to leave. And that, yeah. What a clown. Yeah, exactly. So the next day, however, okay, so now we're on that day. Jennifer learns that Titania is actually out and is filing a lawsuit against her, having trademarked the name She-Hulk. And this might be the biggest fourth wall break of them all. And you actually heard some very familiar music, kind of, just for a few seconds. Now, for those of you who don't know, She-Hulk was actually born back because of the old Incredible Hulk TV show. Because at the time, the, the Incredible Hulk was on CBS. and Marvel was worried that if CBS ever brought a She-Hulk character, there was no She-Hulk at the time. If they brought a character on the show and called her She-Hulk, they would own that character outright and yeah, they wouldn't the rights, have to pay yeah. yeah, and they wouldn't have to pay Marvel any money. So Stan Lee is like, I've got to create this character now, and hence the She-Hulk. And it was born over the issue of they were worried about the trademark. So we kind of see that kind of break into reality here of the trademark of She-Hulk being the issue. And you kind of heard a version of the old Incredible Hulk music play in the background. Oh, I love that theme. Yeah. I love that show. I don't know about you, Donnie, but I love I, that show. I did as a kid. I don't really like it now, but I did as a kid. So Okay. All right. And it's, it's one of those things that even though I'm not into it now, we still owe a great debt to it because – it's one of those things that put Marvel on the map long before the MCU. The pilot was phenomenal. I, I will say that. The pilot was great. I mean, it, it, like I said, we, we, we owe a debt to it. And obviously, this show owes a debt to it. And Spider-Woman uh, was born for the same reason. Marvel was worried that because of the success of Spider-Man, somebody was going to make a Spider-Woman. And so they were like, oh, we got to create this character to keep, you know, to get the trademark. Yeah, yeah. Which is the same reason you see, you know, endless versions of like Superman. Why there was a Supergirl and a and Crypto the Super Dog, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I, and by the way, for people who were out there complaining, they're like, "Oh, this isn't She Hulk. It's just so funny." Yada yada yada. Dan Slott, the writer who actually wrote She Hulk said this might be the She-Hulkiest episode ever. He said it was perfect. The yeah. guy who wrote She-Hulk. Yeah, and I also don't... Look, and I'm not one to agree with everything that Dan Slott does. Like, I, I did not like his Spider-Man run. Sure. At all. But, you know, you've got to at least give credence to the people that have written, uh, have written these characters. Mm -hmm. Uh... And, and, but again, all, all, all you got to do is read a She-Hulk comic. Pick one up and read it. The problem is not enough of these people do that. And, and we're, we're not saying that you have to be an expert on this. But do a web search. Read one She-Hulk comic somewhere. And yeah. you'll see that, again, this is a very lighthearted character usually. I mean, what, what, what's the matter? You don't have two ninety nine to spend on 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 comicsology. By the way, they just relaunched the. She has a new series just this year. Yeah, which I might go back and read. Cause... Right. 
what what I've read, I've read the first couple issues. It really is good. And again, a very lighthearted character. All right, I'll check out some issues and maybe we'll, we'll do a review at some point. Sure enough. Uh, but yeah, um, anything else you want to say? Or? No, th- this episode's an A+. Yeah, for me, it's an A+. Um, I-, I thought it was funny. I love the Wong and Madison stuff. Mm-hmm. I thought the action stuff was cool. Mm-hmm. And She-Hulk looked really hot in this episode, so. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm gonna be a man, but I'm not gonna cat call and be stupid about it, but she looked really hard about it. Right. Yeah. And can you imagine if you know I, I like the scene where she, you know, picked that guy up. Oh. I mean, yeah, that's yes, please. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's go. Oh man, I wish I lived in Either the MCU or the DC. Seriously, what's wrong? That guy was living the dream, man. Anyway, I know, what a loser. I mean, let's let's call it what it is. That guy is a loser. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Uh, because and, I mean, that yeah. breakfast looked pretty damn good too. Yeah, and all of the people that like swiped right on her and like you know and you know she did she got she was on that dating site and got no responses as Jen at all. She's a lawyer. Yeah, what's wrong ridiculous. with you guys? Ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. Tatiana, Tatiana Maslany is just phenomenal. Again, I said it before. I'll say it again. Getting crossed up to some wires. Getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> On the list. Um, and I know Chris Evans, our friend who's podcasted with us before, is watching and enjoying the pen clicking. Um, <laughs> as he commented on it last night on, on Twitter. Um, well, but, I'm uh, glad we can entertain our fellow podcasters as uh, well. That's, that's what it's about. Um um, but, uh, yeah, I love this show. It's an A plus for me. And, um, oh, um, so a couple of things. Um, the, at D23, just a quick update. Uh, they talked about, uh, Armor Wars. Okay. Where it starts filming, uh, early next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it will have. Uh, it will be a six-episode series, and as expected, Don Cheadle will be returning. Um, and um, he will first appear in. Uh, he will first reappear. Sorry, because he's been you know around the universe. He will reappear in Secret Invasion. Okay. Uh, before that show. Uh, and also the other thing too, uh, they talked a little bit about Echo, you know, which is the character that spins out of uh, Hawkeye. Right. Uh, uh, and, you know, in the comics, Daredevil. Um, Not the Emerald Echo, which is available no, right here on YouTube. And I would sue if they, if they called it that <laughs> uh, and probably lose. But, um, uh, yeah, so they talked about that. And specifically, they talk about it's going to explore the backstory of the kingpin because he, mm. spoiler, he returns and he returns with one eye. So, uh, uh, yeah. so it's going to explore a lot of his backstory and history. And they also premiered a new logo for Daredevil Born Again. And just the logo, Donnie, has me. So, good <laughs> Lord, I can't wait for that show. I'll tell you right away, folks, I'm just going to be biased for a second. When Charlie Cox appears as Daredevil on She-Hulk, mm-hmm. you're going to explode. <laughs> that episode, um, is going to have to do something really horrendous. Um, um, to to be to get a bad rating, uh, you know. Because just having Daredevil in it is probably going to get it a three out of five, I, I, or you know, or whatever the equivalent of that is. So it, it, I just want to, I just want to, uh, I just want to point that out. That be prepared. Like that episode would have to truly be horse manure for me to give it a bad, a bad rating. I cannot wait, Donnie. And I don't know if you saw the latest picture of him in the in the yellow and red. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. 
I know. <laughs> Hopefully, you... make a statue, damn it! I'll buy it. <laughs> Have taken my money. Yep. Now they're gonna do it. Now what you watch? Hot Toys Monday morning. Bam! Then they're gonna release it. Then like, there goes for him. You know what? Here's an idea. When that episode is on, as you're watching it, film yourself, and I want to see like your reaction. Okay, I'll try. You do that, and I'll do that when Jade shows back up on Star Girl. And I'll film my reaction because I know I'm going to be ready to explode, uh, yeah. you know, seeing any Green Lantern character. So, yeah, all right, all right, okay, all right. Uh, but I'm excited. Uh, it's a cool Iron Man stuff, cool Daredevil stuff, great She Hulk content. It's been a good episode. I always have fun sitting around with Donnie and talking about nerd stuff. Betcha. Um, and, um, and, um, Again, we will review those two trailers on our next Marvel uh, uh, Masterworks episode. And um, uh, maybe what Donnie and I can do, since we talked about it at the top of the show, in our news portion, maybe, uh, I know we haven't reviewed uh, the Iron Man comic on here as of yet, but given that 650 is a special number, uh, and, and provided that we're not extremely confused, Maybe we'll do it, even if we are, we'll do it because of the mind, the, the the nature of that of that issue. We can come on and review that issue uh, when it hits, and uh, if we like it, and if we continue on with number one of Invincible Iron Iron Man, maybe you'll see some more Iron Man reviews uh, okay. and comic wise on here. So, but we will celebrate that when it happens, and of course, the uh, as we know some more Marvel news when we know it. We will share with you, and we will discuss it. But if you want to keep up with uh, us and talk Marvel with us, where can you do that, Donnie? Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter or TikTok as the Emerald Enthusiast. You can also find me on YouTube doing lots of collectible reviews. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to check in with me, it's at Adam underscore Leeds fan on Twitter. Um, we have the uh, Twitter page for the um, for the podcast and Vidcast Network at MMNPDC. Uh, we have a Facebook group which is listed somewhere in the description below. Click that, and I will add you, and we can continue the conversation there. But until next time, remember that She-Hulk is forever. From the first time she lands on a prospective boyfriend <laughs> while he's reading a book to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone. <laughs>